Happy New Year everybody and welcome back to the Black Jersey. My name's Max, I'm the host over here at this channel and a massive thank you to my patrons for all the support that you gave me throughout 2023. A massive year of growth for the channel as you can see with these numbers up on screen but there are more numbers I want to discuss in far more detail that aren't my growth statistics on Instagram and YouTube. I want to discuss the fact that red cards in my opinion don't ruin test matches when it comes to rugby union. A lot of people are coming across saying, you know, we're still pretty grumpy at Wayne Barnes after the 2023 World Cup final. The thing is, Kiwis just still aren't over that, and in a lot of the Christmas things, the holiday things I went to over the summer in 2024-23, people were still a bit frustrated. So, I decided, you know what, I'm going to do a little bit of digging and I want to collect every single yellow and red card that a tier 1 nation received from 2020 to 23. Of all these tier 1 nations that I've counted, I haven't gone for Italy and Japan, as Italy and Japan, I think, definitely do give outlier data, whereas Fiji are yet to be given tier 1 nation status, but they should be a tier 1 nation very soon, as World Rugby said they will make Fiji a tier 1 nation. So, we're going to look through Australia, Argentina, New Zealand, South Africa, Wales, England, Scotland, Ireland and France. We're going to see every single card they've received over the 2020s, the decades so far, and we're going to see the statistics of how this impacts them in a game. So first off, the first graphic you can see, if I've got the right graphic, you should see the total of yellow cards given to every single tier one nation. So as we can see, Australia were yellow carded the most times out of any nation throughout the 2020s so far. In the 2020s, Australia have been yellow carded 34 times. Of all these tier 1 nations that have ranked, they are placed ninth in the world. So the fact that Australia have received the most yellow cards is completely in sync with the fact that they are the lowest ranked of these nations. When you look at the statistics of the cards that they're given, well simply put, they deserve to be the lowest ranked out of these nations. This is a key factor in why I thought Australia would come fourth in the World Cup pool stage when Dave Rennie was still in charge and even when Eddie Jones took over, Eddie obviously just could not get them to win so I still said no, they're probably going to come third. Whereas we now look at Argentina and Wales. Argentina have received 28 yellows, they're ranked 7th in the world, as they beat the Welsh in the World Cup quarterfinals. The Welsh have received 26 and they are slightly just in between the Aussies and the Pumas. So all three of those nations, they are ranked the lowest in the world out of the Tier 1 nations, and they are the three nations who have received the most yellow cards. We now see South Africa and the All Blacks, they are definitely outliers with their 25, but the fact that they're able to be so far above everyone else just simply comes down to South Africa do have a massive talent pool. Um, while they didn't have really any depth aside from the 33 the pick for the World Cup, they did have a very, very deep talent pool within that 33-man squad. The All Blacks as well, here in New Zealand, we do have a very strong depth pool throughout the whole nation for both the women and the men so aside from those two nations things do continue to sync up once we move over to Scotland who are well ranked just one spot above Argentina they're ranked six in the world Scotland have received 16 yellow cards so while this is way way fewer yellows than the Welsh have received as we can see through the data Scotland are next up in the world rankings, as is England, who received 15 yellow cards in the 2020s so far. They're ranked fifth. We then see the French, they're ranked fourth, and the Irish are ranked the second. Those two nations have received the fewest cards, the fewest yellow cards, I should have said there rather, out of the tier one nations so far in the 2020s. So it's no coincidence that these guys are ranked so far up in the world rankings, and it's no coincidence that the Irish and the French actually had better winning ratios than the All Blacks and the South Africans throughout the World Cup cycle. Ian Foster and Jacques Nienaber both had win percentage in the, in the 60s. We now get to the red card totals though. This is where things do get a little bit distorted because the All Blacks, well, they got red carded twice at the World Cup, whereas the Aussies didn't concede any red cards under Eddie Jones, so that was probably the biggest improvements that the Aussies made from Dave Rennie to Eddie Jones. So you see, New Zealand and England, 
they've received the most red cards in the 2020s. So the fact that the All Blacks had that red card in the World Cup final, it demonstrates a bit of a an inability to learn from bad things happening. Whereas England, obviously, you know, England, they're not really getting coached to go down as low as a lot of the other nations. Rugby analyst, the other YouTuber, he's picked up on the facts that England typically want to go a bit higher than other nations. So when they get the timing wrong, that's almost always going to be a cardable offense. Aussie though, <laughs> Aussie, it's a very high, high card total for them. And then with the Scottish and the French, yeah, they've also been red carded four times. Argentina three times, South Africa three times. Um, we've got Ireland's twice, but Wales, well, they are the only tier one nation not to receive a red card in the 2020s so far. So hats off to them. The thing is with these stats though, they start to get very, very concurrent. We start to see a real pattern when we add them up overall. Australia, most cards received throughout the 2020s when we're looking at both reds and yellows. They're ranked the lowest out of anybody. We also notice that the All Blacks are second up with 32, Argentina with 31, and South Africa with 28. The reason that these four nations are conceding cards so many times throughout the 2020s, well, this is because in the rugby championship, they have the law of the 20 minute red card. This is the same as Super Rugby. In the 2022 Super Rugby season, there were more cards dished out than there were matches played. I've got the data right here on screen. You can see it in just a wee little typing thing graphic that I've made. You can see that there were more cards than there were games played in the 2022 season. So New Zealand and Australia, they have the worst discipline out of the rugby championship nations because they play in a domestic league, a club level competition where discipline is not enforced as harshly. The 20 minute red card also continues into the rugby championship and so they're further disincentivized to keep their discipline. Argentina and South Africa, because they play in that league as well when they're facing the All Blacks, facing the Wallabies. They also don't have as much of an incentive as once the red carded player has been off the pitch for 20 minutes, they can just usher in a replacement, though the red carded player can't come back onto the pitch. So the rugby championship, all four of those nations, they have been carded the most times throughout the 2020s so far. And we then notice that Australia are ranked the lowest out of these guys, there's not too much of a difference between the All Blacks and Los Pumas, but out of the Rugby Championship nations, the Springboks are ranked the highest in the world, and they have received the fewest cards of the nations competing in the Rugby Championship. We then see with the six nations, all five of those have all conceded fewer cards in the Rugby Championship. Wales are the lowest ranked team out of the guys competing in the Six Nations, and throughout the 2020s, they've conceded the most cards, albeit all of them yellow, but they are still the lowest ranked of these nations. Ireland, they're ranked second in the world. They are the highest ranked team currently competing in the Six Nations, and they were only carded nine times so far in the 2020s. Andy Farrell has conceded single digit cards in his era as the Irish head coach. And Ireland, as I said, they're ranked the highest of the Six Nations after conceding the fewest cards. France as well pretty much directly goes in. France are second for both cards conceded and Six Nations nations, if that makes sense to you guys. So we're clearly seeing that the way the laws come into the rugby championship at Super Rugby, it's impacting what happens overall. So this probably paints us the best possible picture to make this case. So what's the average cards per test for every nation? Well, I want you guys to have a guess. As we can see, Mario Ledesma, when he was the head coach of the Los Pumas, his team has the highest average cards per test in the 2020s, and he ended up resigning at the end of 2021 after taking an absolutely massive loss to the Irish when Tomas Lavanini became the first player in history to get three red cards in Test Rugby. We can also see Australia, their discipline slightly improved when Eddie Jones came and competed Dave Rennie, so Dave Rennie, 
he absolutely needed to go with such a high cards per test ratio. Eddie Jones didn't coach them for many tests, so I don't think we can read into that too much. Same with Warren Gatland, whereas South Africa didn't play any test matches in 2020, so I don't really think we can probably read into their data too much. Um, Ireland, France, Scotland, pretty, pretty good discipline. Eddie Jones is England. Um, pretty decent overall. Wayne Pivak's Wales, they started conceding more and more of those cards towards the end of his tenure as well, so it was probably the right call to get rid of him. We can see as well, <clears throat> Borthwick era England. Can we really read into that one too much? Probably not, but with the cards total for England, we can see that this probably isn't a coaching thing. This is more of a case of how their nation approaches, well, the head high contact laws. Who are the most carded players in the 2020s though, guys? Would you like to have a guess who's received the most cards? Tomas Lavanining of Los Pumas. The Argentinian lock is combined with Marcos Kramer. They're tying for the most overall cards received. I'm ranking Mohamed Hawass over them though, as in the 2020s so far, he's been the only international tier one nation player to get two red cards, and he's currently locked up in prison for beating his wife. So with Mohamed Hawass, he's perhaps a bit of an outlier. After Lavanini and Kramer, who has definitely improved his discipline in the uh, Michael Checker era there, sorry, it then goes to Scott Barrett. He got a red card for receiving two yellows in a test match. Marika Korobedi, I'm very surprised he's only been red carded once in his career. Finn Russell of Scotland does have a bit of a bad habit of trying to knock the ball down, a few cynical things. So Finn Russell, that's one of the reasons I don't really rate him too highly, and he's quite far high up this list. Liam Williams is then the most yellow carded player who hasn't received a red card. He's got a bit of a habit of cheap shots as well, as does Fafta Klerk. Shannon Frizzell, a lot of people have their reservations about Shannon Frizzell. Vili LaRue, very, very passionate, gets a bit grumpy because he's just, simply put, he's willing to die for the Bok jersey. Then there's Tom Wright, who, well, Eddie Jones was absolutely correct to drop Tom Wright. So as we can see with this list as well, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, Argentina, they're the only nations who have multiple players appearing on this wee list of compiled of the players who have received the most cards. So these particular players I've listed here are really dragging their nations down in terms of their discipline. So hopefully Scott Barrett as the All Blacks captain is going to clean up his discipline a fair bit. Hopefully South Africa move on from Vili LaRue because, well, Damien Willems is improving so, so much. Hopefully Argentina move on from Tomas Lavanini and, well, luckily Marcos Kramer does look like he's starting to grow up a bit and really just hone in that discipline. So yes, those are very, very interesting statistics to present. Wayne Smith even, remember earlier in 2023, he kind of had a bit of a go at the amount of cars that are getting dished out. He said he would rather watch an animal documentary. But the problem is, people with all these statistics, they aren't really, I think, gaining the right perspective with the data I've presented to you guys. Um, this video here by a small-time YouTuber, it got released, and while it was refreshing to see the high dislike ratio compared to the like ratio, it's a bit alarming when videos like these exist in the first place. The information that we can take out of these cards being dished out is that, well, when the laws aren't enforced properly by Sanzar in the Rugby Championship and Super Rugby, well, the Aussie and the Kiwi players, they're not going to get as properly incentivized to keep their discipline in comparison to the Six Nations. All those guys, they play in the Six Nations where the um, red card is the full 80 minutes. Charlie Yules, for example, for England, he got a red card about two minutes into the Ireland clash in 2022. Tom Curry red carded very early on against Argentina in the pool stage of the World Cup. Um, they had to play those full matches without Yules and without Curry. Because England, because the other Six Nations members have learned to adjust to going such a distance without players, they've really just learned to keep their discipline, whereas for the rugby championship competitors, they haven't learned to keep their discipline. Um, the fact that this video exists, it's kind of a case of people saying, oh, the ref's bad, he's giving out too many cards, oh, the laws are 
a badge. They should be like super rugby. No, no, no. They shouldn't be like super rugby because, because statements like these, I don't think have any empirical data to back them up. Statements such as mine, where I'm talking about, this is how the cards go. This is how your team loses. This is a message to rein in your discipline because factors like the ones that I see in the comment section, there's no data to back up referee bias. There's no data to pick up why other nations should adopt the super rugby laws. And so I think it's time for New Zealand and Australian fans to really just understand it's time to revolt against Sanzar's refusal to look after players who have head injuries. This channel exists because I played my last game at 17 due to head injuries. I'm going to have to say that a few times throughout this year because, well, this is definitely a controversial topic, but ultimately it's bigger than the game itself, so we do have to continue to cover it. I hope you guys liked the start to 2024 that presented a bit more data analysis in comparison to tactical analysis. If you want to see a bit more data analysis from me going forward, please just uh, leave something in the comments to uh, share your thoughts down below and everything. Do like this video if you enjoyed it as well, and let's also hit that subscribe button. I'm hoping to hit 25k by the end of this year. Thank you so much for watching this video guys as well and once more happy new year and thank you to my patrons. I'll see you on the next video. Cheers for watching guys from Max.